February the 2nd, 65, we came in the house. There was six children. Mark was the oldest, then Andrew and David and Tina. And then Mum's second marriage, there was me, Maya, only Maya and Johnny. So there was six children and two adults, so there was eight people in three-bedroom semi. Never quiet. You never had one minute to yourself. It was just crazy. We had no central heating, no inside toilet, and there was one, one gas fire for the whole house. And, and David used to like going to Woolworths and shoplifting. And he got caught, and this policeman came back with him, knocked on the door, David with him. I said to David, fancy getting caught. I played out with him. I said, you don't get caught, David. You've got to get better at it. I spent so many hours staring out of my window at the rows of gardens and houses. Jamie's view is the exact same as mine. To me, it's always represented growing up on a council estate. This is named after me, you know. So I came out when I was 15, and I came out as bisexual initially because I didn't really know if I was gay or... I just knew I wasn't straight. Um, so I had, like, a sudden urge one day just to tell my friends, so I did it on Snapchat. It was, like, a black screen and it was like, I'm bisexual. And I felt terrified sending it, but it was all so nice, all very accepting. Um, then after that, I, quite, I let my guard down a bit and started to feel a lot more comfortable in myself. There was 2,000 men worked at Lee Hall. It was a family, it was a community. As I say, I lived on a cardboard housing estate. Everybody was miners. I was a member of the greatest union ever, the National Union of Mine Work. If you went into a fight, you had to go in united, because if you weren't united, you were never going to win. Well, we went into this one, divided. And the rest is history, we lost. When Thatcher went, in my book, it was a good day when she went, because she was a bastard. I broke communities. There's people that even today still don't talk to each other because of the strike. Johnny, uh, my brother, was my best friend. There was only 14 months between us. My mum used to say that I was more like his mother because I always used to look after him. <laughs> he was just such a character. He had, um, he had so much charisma. Everybody just loved to be around him. You just couldn't help it. Something about him just drew you in all the time. And Really good fun, really interesting, super intelligent. And, um, definitely a one-off, Johnny was, wasn't he? Definitely. Bit of a lad there, Johnny. He'd flip in breaking places and I'd have to go down the police station with him because your granny, Mark, go and have down a plate. I've been to court with him. Mark, she's crying. Yeah, Mum, all right. He always landed on his feet, you know. He always landed on his feet. But it wasn't until he got a lot older that he realised he'd actually got, um, yeah, bipolar. You know, why his mood changed. It was no fault of his own. It was just something that happened and he just couldn't control it. Johnny was definitely the golden child in the family. The one with the halo, always. But I loved him to bits and I really miss him so much. It's not the same. Being working class and, you know, when you come from such a small town, the people in it themselves aren't educated and open-minded enough to understand the outside world, because it's very, like, you live in a bubble, which I didn't realise till moving to London. It is, it does affect you and it does affect, like, how harsh you are on yourself. When I was struggling understanding my identity, I just felt like an absolute free. The word non-binary wasn't used or genderqueer wasn't used or you're lucky even if anyone says the word gay. Basically growing up poor is fucking awful. It's mentally draining, you know, in Grimsby is a whole lot of mental illness and, mm. you know, unhealthy coping mechanisms because that's all you can do in life. You struggle and then you die, basically. That's the whole sort of attitude I get from my hometown. Like, you just make life the most of it. Don't get me wrong, it is beautiful sometimes, but, like, you know, you struggle, you laugh, you cry, 
you have relationships, you do whatever, and then that's it. 